It's been a reasonably long time since a game latched onto my innermost sense of childlike wonder. That is, until I lost 30 hours building a fortress town in Entrouded's Meadows before I even started its main quest. This action RPG survival sim already has a gobsmackingly gorgeous style, a vast open world, intelligent crafting systems, seemingly limitless base building, and satisfying character customization at its early access launch. That said, it's also marred by a few bugs, a lackluster story, decent at best puzzle design, and clunky combat. And yet, across 62 hours soaking in its rustic fantasy charm, it was easy to forgive those hitches and gleefully get lost in its depths with a friend. A mysterious fungal shroud has covered much of the world of Embervale. What exactly is the shroud, you ask? I'm still not completely sure. The notes and journal entries you pick up along your journey are interesting enough, but aside from a short opening cutscene and a few quest-related dialogues, they provide the extent of any storytelling. Elixir and blood. A drop for a drop. Really? You're just dropped at the southernmost tip of this expansive world, and then you blaze off on your own path. The best part of Entrouded is instead how alluring yet straightforward it is to build stuff like this especially given how much real estate your custom bases can take up within this tangled web of RPG crafting and survival systems. Maybe the real main story was the base I built along the way. Once you build a flame altar out of a few common resources, you too can begin quickly plopping down your own structures, your own furnishings, your own crafting stations, and so forth. Even if you don't get fancy, setting up flame altars is necessary to make progress while exploring the map, since aside from a few sparsely located fast travel towers, the only places that you can quickly teleport back to are your custom bases. In Shrouded's most exciting discoveries are usually when you stumble on a piece of lore in a remote location, pointing you to a dungeon with some hidden treasure or a jumping puzzle, or a house or something. That's most often where new block types for your buildings and other crafting materials are stashed away for you to permanently unlock. There's no critical path in the traditional sense, meaning if you want to travel further out, you do need to keep upgrading your flame. That's the force that keeps your avatar alive, even in the lethal and otherworldly shroud that covers vast swaths of the map. Surviving within the shroud is extra challenging, since you only get a limited duration to stay alive inside of it. Your timer will only restore itself when you resurface or find hourglass capsules. Take too long and you'll eventually die. You can't fast travel to safety while inside of it either, adding a welcome layer of danger to what might otherwise be straightforward excursions into the wild. Upgrading your flame means the Shroud is less capable of killing you, but you'll need to grind quite a bit to get there, and in that aspect, Enshrouded could do with a little more handholding. Without proper guidance, it's possible to spend hours running in circles looking for certain items without any notion of their whereabouts. When you finally do upgrade your flame level, you're granted access to distant, higher-level biomes, of which there are currently four, like the dry plains of the Nomad Highlands and the sand-strewn desert expanse of the Kindle Wastes. And once you venture far enough beyond these starting areas, Enshrouded's decently-sized bestiary begins to take shape. Two of my favorite opponents are the devastating dragon-like Wisp Wyvern and the overpowering Vuka Brawler, both of whom present a balanced challenge and drop powerful gear after you beat them. Unfortunately, gaining experience points to reach Entrouded's level cap of 25 is often mind-numbingly slow, especially since leveling is mainly relegated to combat. But I was delighted to find its nuances do eventually begin to come together once you reach level 15 or so. Using this sophisticated skill tree system, I managed to build my character into a powerful wand and shield wielding battle mage with a unique fighting style that let me do ridiculous amounts of fire damage. Simply running around in Shrouded's map and finding new stuff is already fun enough to carry it. Biomes are liberally strewn with abandoned villages and forts, map-expanding ancient obelisks, these fast travel towers I mentioned earlier, and so forth. Ironically, these points of interest are at their best when they're treated like high fantasy set dressing to hide loot and fight some monsters in before sending you on your merry way. Conversely, Enshrouded is at its worst when it tries to introduce puzzles of any sort, 
and a good chunk of its areas are gated by uninspired challenges that just involve flipping some switches to open a nearby door while skirting around basic traps. But at least these lukewarm puzzles are only a minuscule part of Entrouded's overall experience. Whether you're adventuring or designing your dream base, almost every part of Entrouded's art style is visually captivating, making it dangerously easy to lose yourself in its homespun fantasy world. Entrouded is capable of looking like this and still running consistently at its max settings, but that's assuming you're playing it on the right set of hardware. I was doing so on a desktop equipped with a 4070Ti, a Ryzen 3900X, and 32 gigs of RAM. Meanwhile, my friend, playing on a gaming laptop with only marginally inferior specs, unexpectedly described a much less polished experience, with plenty of immersion-breaking glitches and bugs, so your mileage may vary. It's great that I could build a glider and a grappling hook to move around the open world quicker in the absence of any rideable mounts, but the control scheme feels at odds with itself. For instance, frantically tapping the spacebar to make my sluggish avatar jump faster will often make me unintentionally launch into glider mode and fly off a cliff, or cause me to accidentally shoot my grappling hook at an off-screen grappling point and then go flying when I just meant to loot something off the ground. It's extra disappointing that I can't just use the grappling hook whenever I want, since it relies on very specific grappling hook anchors. They're sparsely located, and using them costs an exorbitant amount of stamina, which is a real shame when you actually want to swing somewhere. Even after putting resources into upgrading both the grappling hook and the glider to higher tier versions later in the campaign, they still felt stunted by Entrouded's unfairly limited stamina pool, until you eventually bump up your endurance with food items and stat boosting skills. This web of unlockable skills is so diversely stacked with interesting moves that it sucks I needed to invest my limited skill points into things like double jumping and stamina drain reductions to make Entrouded's movement feel good at all. That's made exponentially more challenging by Entrouded's overly aggressive enemy AI, which attacks relentlessly in unpredictably large groups, giving me the impression these encounters are tuned for much snappier controls. It's also a little annoying that every piece of equipment, aside from armor, has a durability meter, including legendary weapons. It's great you can auto-repair everything in your inventory at a workbench or an anvil, but the former is only available at a custom base, and the latter is often too rare to rely on. When it comes time to level up your crafting capabilities, Enshrouded requests a rather large stockpile of patience while you set up a sophisticated pipeline of raw resources and material refining stations. For instance, crafting armor requires tons of wood and dirt, which you'll need to burn into charcoal, which is then needed to eventually smelt ore into ingots. But everything has its uses in other parts of this deep crafting ecosystem, too. For instance, dirt is also important in both farming and alchemy and wood is an obvious key ingredient in carpentry. Establishing a steady stream of each of these resources equates to many repeated cycles of looting, mining, cultivating, refining, and eventually crafting. That can get tedious if you try to do everything all at once, but at the same time, it's exciting to lug the next piece of crafting equipment back to your base after a long expedition. Entrouded will likely be an instant hit for anyone who's ever wanted to build a castle in a fantasy world full of danger. And hey, it makes all that building fun and easy with an intuitive set of tools. But even if you don't care much about crafting, Entrouded's RPG systems are already solid enough to carry you through its open world for a few dozen hours, even if its vague story and puzzles are forgettable, and its combat and movement systems could use some fine tuning. Thankfully, there's usually no pressure to do anything but try to unlock the next visually breathtaking area, and that made for a smooth 62-hour journey. For more, check out our reviews of Power World or Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. And for everything else, stick with IGN.